Hey, what's up everyone? It's Clifton here with the uh, Clifton Creative Academy. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be learning how to build a bakery website, or actually it's more of a cafe website, using Elementor as our page builder of choice and WordPress. And the great thing about this specific uh, tutorial is that everything that we're using here is 100% free. So there are no paid plugins involved in building out this website. Now I will tell you, I always highly recommend that you purchase the pro versions of any plugins that you use when you're building websites for clients. But I do understand that sometimes people need to build things that, that they wanna show or you may be building this for just yourself and you wanna see if it's possible to be able to do it with the free versions of these plugins. And it absolutely is, you just have to be a little bit creative and get a little help from additional plugins to make that happen. However, you'll never reach the full potential of what is possible with the pro versions of these plugins. So the pro versions of Elementor definitely has a lot to offer. And the pro versions of some of the other plugins we're gonna be using, uh, for instance, uh, the, the theme, the Astra theme that we're using to build this out um, also has a lot of benefits as well. However, it is possible to build a website uh, using completely free tools if you know what you're doing and you can actually build something that is very presentable. So let's take a look at this website as an example. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the screen so you can set, kind of see what's happening here. So we've got this website, uh, we've got a, a nice header here and these are page dividers are separating the header from the featured area. And then below we have uh, a call to action and you can kind of see how on the different sections we have these beautiful transitions coming in. I'll show you how to do that with Elementor. And this is actually a fairly simple website to build, but it will cover a lot of the great things that Elementor has to offer. The reason we're using Elementor in this tutorial is because out of all the page builders that exist, and in future videos we'll talk about these page builders, Elementor really has the most robust free version of their plugin available in the WordPress plugin repository. So we're gonna be using Elementor to do this. Okay, so uh, now that we've uh, gone through that, I will be uh, going going ahead and starting from the beginning. So we're gonna move away from this uh, page and we're gonna start afresh and literally build this out step by step without missing a single step. All right, let's get started. So what we're going to do first is we are going to install a fresh version of WordPress. To be able to do that, you have to have two things. The first thing that you'll have to have is a domain name that you're gonna install your WordPress, uh, you're gonna put your WordPress install on. And the second thing that you'll need is hosting. Now the hosting company that I recommend that you use is SiteGround. SiteGround is a top rated hosting platform that is used by over 2 million websites today to build WordPress sites. And the reason why people love SiteGround so much is that they have one of the best and easiest website building and management uh, uh, systems on the market today. They're also extremely uh, affordable and very secure. They also will help you load your website fast and they provide ex exceptional support. So I highly recommend that uh, people start with, uh, with SiteGround. There are other hosting options out there, but I fully trust my websites with uh, SiteGround. And I've been using them for many, many years and I've used many other hosts and the support and uh, the platform use and the speed that I've experienced from SiteGround is simply unmatched. So uh, there's a link in the description below if you'd like to to get to SiteGround and purchase your hosting um, through that link. That link is an affiliate link, so full transparency, which means that if you purchase hosting from SiteGround using the link in the description below, I do get a commission which helps me run the channel and uh, it doesn't cost you anymore or doesn't take anything from you, although you do not have to use the affiliate link. You can just go directly to the website for SiteGround and purchase your hosting there. Now, when you get there, I highly recommend just making it easy. Click on Get Started and you'll be presented with three options. Option one is for just one website at $395 a month. I recommend option two, which is the grow big option at $595 uh, a month. And the reason I recommend this is because it allows you to build unlimited websites. You also not only get the essential WordPress features, but you also get premium WordPress features as well. The next best one to that would be the Go Geek. And uh, the only difference between the Go Geek and the Grow Big is that you get more space and you get four times more uh, monthly visits to your website. So uh, give this some serious consideration, but if you're just getting started, go ahead and get the Grow Big. It's more than enough to do what you need to do in terms of building a, a few websites. And then later on, you can go ahead and upgrade or graduate over to the Go Geek if you feel 
that you wanted to do more with your hosting, okay? So let's go ahead and dive right into the uh, into the cPanel for uh, SiteGround, and I'm gonna show you that right now. So <clears throat> here we are, this is my uh, SiteGround in install. And uh, once you get here, uh, this is what we call cPanel. And in cPanel, you have all your software and all your tools that you're gonna be need using to build out your WordPress website. Now, one of the things I love about SiteGround, actually there are two things that I love about them. The first thing that I like is that they have quick and easy one-click install WordPress installers, meaning I can just simply click on the WordPress installer and have WordPress install in any domain or subdomain of my choice. The other thing that I like about SiteGround is that it comes with Let's Encrypt and Let's Encrypt basically allows you to have SSL on your domain. So what that means is instead of you running your site through the HTTP protocol, you get to be able to run it through the HTTPS protocol, which is more secure and better encrypted. And as a matter of fact, Google requires this now. And uh, also, if you do not have HTTPS installed on your domain, there will be a not secure notification in the address bar <laughs> for your website. And you don't want that because it will chase people away. So they have Let's Encrypt completely free and they will install it for you super fast and you can go ahead and start building your website. So that being said, let's go ahead and install WordPress. So I'm just gonna simply use a WordPress installer. I'm gonna click on it right here under WordPress tools. Okay, then we're gonna click on the install blue button here. Okay, it's gonna ask me to choose the version that I want to install. I'm gonna check. Okay, it looks like the latest version here is 5.2.2. And then it doesn't ask you what domain do you want to install this on? Well, I have mine on a subdomain, so I'm gonna install it on the subdomain for this tutorial. And the subdomain for this tutorial is site.cliftontutorials.com. And then I'm gonna leave the indirect in the directory portion blank because I want it to install directly on this subdomain. And then it's gonna ask you the site name, so we're gonna call this Elementor Tutorial. Actually, no, let's call this Coffee Cakes and Muffins because that's what we're gonna build. Coffee Cakes and Muffins. And here, best tasting coffee cakes and muffins. I keep misspelling muffins. All right, there we go. All right, and as we scroll down, here's the admin username. I'm going to change this to something that I can remember. So I'm going to call this cake admin. And I'm going to create a password. Can I make the admin email my email? I'll keep the language as English. And then I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm going to uncheck this WordPress starter. What this is is they're going to install some default plugins in there. I want a completely clean install, so I'm going to uncheck this. And then I'm going to leave everything else as is and just click on install. This usually takes a few minutes, but once it is done, we'll be ready to look at our fresh install of WordPress. Okay, looks like we are done. I'm going to go ahead and click on the login link here. Okay, so here we are, fresh install of WordPress. It looks like WordPress has a new version out, which is 5.2.3. I'm going to go ahead and update that now so that we have the latest version. All right, and then I'm going to check a few things out. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to plugins and look at the installed plugins. And I noticed that this is their SG optimizer in here, which is a caching plugin from SiteGround. I do not want this plugin, so I'm gonna deactivate it and delete. Okay, it's just SiteGround trying to help us out, but we don't need the help. All right, excellent. Then another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set up my permalinks. Now, what a permalink is, is basically your URL. So you see this portion up here? This is where your URLs will go. And we want our URLs to be simple and easy to understand URLs. So to set that up, I'm gonna to go to settings, 
I'm going to go to permalinks, and I'm going to select this post name version. So if you notice this post name version, it's very simple. It's going to have the title of the page hyphenated if it's more than more than one word, um, and that just makes it easy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that change. Then I'm going to go to general settings. On the general settings, I'm just going to check to make sure that my site title and tagline are correct. My email address is in there. And then I'm going to change my time zone. So I'm in the Los Angeles Pacific time time zone. And then everything else here looks great. I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. Great. And I think we are now uh, ready. So if I go to the front end of the website, I can see that this is just a plain install of WordPress. And I'm now ready to proceed to the next portion, which would be installing a theme, installing the necessary plugins that we need, and then building out our website. Okay, so the next step to uh, getting to building out our coffee cakes and muffins website is we're going to need to install a theme. Now, as I promised in the beginning of the video, everything we're going to be using in this uh, build out is going to be completely free and available to you in the WordPress either theme repository or the plugin repository. So there's no there are no purchases necessary, although I will highly recommend that you consider investing in the pro versions of everything that I provide uh, that I show you in this video because it's totally worth it, especially if you're building websites for clients. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward with that. So if I go to so right now we're in the default install, I'm going to go to the WordPress dashboard here. And I'm going to go look for a theme that I would like to use. So to find your theme, just go to appearance, themes. And we're going to click on add new. All right, and in the WordPress repository, there are plenty of themes that you can use, but I uh, only recommend a few themes that I think are great to use in building websites. And the primary one that I recommend uh, that is a free theme that has all the uh, benefits and features that you will need is the Astra theme from Brainstorm Force. So if you go to the uh, search themes uh, search box here and we type in Astra, Okay, you will see this Astra theme right here. Go ahead and click on install and activate. Great, so now we've activated our Astra theme. So if you visit the front end of the website now, you'll notice that the website now looks completely different. Okay, and don't worry about this. Once you start styling everything, it will not look like this. But installing the theme is the was the next step and what we needed to do. Okay, so now we can go here and we can kind of look at the Astra options. Okay, and under under the Astra options, you'll see uh, several things that you can do here. So, you know, we can upload a logo, we can customize our fonts, there are header options for us, and for settings, and all this is going to happen in the customizer. Everything else that you see here is available in the pro version of Astra, but we're not going to need any of these for the website that we're building right now. Okay, so when we go to the front end of our website, you one of the things that you'll immediately notice is that the website itself. Uh, now it's sort of in this blogging, sort of in this blog format, okay? This is the sort of the default WordPress layout. And typically when you install a theme, you're gonna be looking at something like this. What we want is something that is prepped and ready for us to build out the page any way that we want. And so to do that, we're gonna enlist the help of uh, the page builder, Elementor, which takes us to our second step, which is installing the Elementor free plugin. To do that, go to your WordPress dashboard, Go to plugins, add new, and we're gonna search for Elementor. Okay, there's Elementor. We're gonna go ahead and install Elementor Page Builder now. Activate. And Elementor is now activated. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. I suggest you watch this at, uh, at some time so you can kind of become familiar with it, but Elementor is fairly easy to use, and very easy to pick up as you see as we move through this uh, through this tutorial. Okay, so Elementor is now installed. Now there's one additional step that we need to take. When you go to the front end of the website, we are looking at the home page of the website. So we, we don't want this home page. We want a clear blank canvas for us to start building things on. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to the dashboard. I'm going to click on pages. I'm gonna click on add new. And we're simply gonna call this page our home page. Okay, all right, so this is our home page. I'm gonna leave the content area blank. And if you look here to the right, there are all kinds of options for this page. And the option I'm looking for are the Astra settings, okay? 
So a couple of things I want to do. I want to disable the title on the front end. I want this home page showing up on the front end. Okay, and to give you an idea of what I mean, let's not let's leave that alone for a minute. If I publish this page now and we view this page, you can see that it still looks like that blogging layout with the sidebar and so on and the home page. Okay, so I don't I don't want this. Uh, so we're not going to configure this to make this into our home page. So I'm going to go back to edit the page here. And now I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to disable this title. Okay. I'm also going to set up the sidebar to be no sidebar. Right. This is an Astra setting. And this is one of the reasons that, that I love Astra very much. They really do think about uh, the different use cases for a page. The content layout that I want is I want this content layout to be uh, full width and stretched. Okay, that means that the the content of the page will stretch from each from one side of the screen or one side of the browser, excuse me, to the other side of the browser. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna do one additional thing. I'm gonna go to our page attributes over here, and because we have Elementor installed, we get the chance to be able to choose an Elementor Canvas and an Elementor Full Width. Now the difference between the Elementor Canvas and the Full Width is that they're both Full Width, but with Elementor Full Width, you get to keep your header and footer in place, and with Elementor Canvas, it is a completely blank canvas. I want the Full Width, okay? Now that I've made these, uh, made, uh, made these settings changes, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Update. And now when we view the page, you will notice now that the page is full width. There is our header, there's our footer. We can't see the content area right now because there is no content there, but we, we will see that. Um, and we are now prepared to start building out our home page. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on, um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit page here. Okay, and one of the things that I want to do is I want this to be the page that you see when you first visit the website. So if we, if we visit the website right now, you'll still notice that it still has this blogging layout. So we want to get rid of this. We want when you visit the page, the first thing that you'll see will be whatever we've built here. So to do that, go to your dashboard. Go to settings. We're going to go to reading. And here where it says your home page displays, right now it's set to set up to show your latest posts. This is set up for a blog. We want this set up for a website. So I'm going to click on display a static page and we're going to select the page that we want below which is going to be the home page that we created i'm going to click on save those changes and now when we visit the site it will take us directly to the home page where we can now start building our coffee cakes and muffins layout okay so if we look at our source website okay we've got the header section over here and then a featured area we have uh, this three column uh, image blurbs. And then we've got the about and a little menu, uh, a little menu section over here, testimonials, and then our footer with a map and call to action. So when I build sites, I literally build them from top to bottom. So I start at the very top left and I start building everything out. So the first thing we're gonna work on is this header. And the first thing we're going to work on in the header is this section right here. Okay, so we're going to create this section and then we're going to just move down and keep building until we've built out the full home page to look exactly like this. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to build this section. Now this section right here does not ship native, natively with Elementor. This is something that, that was added on using hooks and Anywhere Elementor. So we're going to go and create this in Anywhere Elementor right now. Okay, so. We're going to go back to our site that we're building, go to the dashboard, and we will go to Anywhere Elementor Templates. Okay, and if we click here, we see we have no templates now, so we're going to add some templates. And I'm just going to call this, I'm just going to call this Utility, actually, let's make it easy. We'll call this Top Area, okay? So top area, I'm going to publish it. And what you'll notice is that it immediately gives us a short code for us to be able to insert this anywhere that we want. It also has a PHP code, but we won't be using that. We'll just simply use the short code. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to edit this with Elementor. Okay. 
Uh, one of the things we want to do is make sure we're using a full width template of the post attributes. I'm going to click update. And we're going to go ahead and edit with Elementor. This will now take us to the Elementor editor. And as you can see, we now have our section ready to edit. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to drag in our structure. Okay, so how do we want this structured? Well, if you click on the plus sign here, you'll see some structure options. Everything from a full width one to two columns, three columns, four columns, and so on. Now, if we look at our source site, it looks like there are two columns, but technically it, it could be more. The, the important thing is we want to have the phone number all the way to the left and the address all the way to the right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the full width column like this. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the uh, elements and I'm going to drag in an intersection. And the reason I do this is because I want to be able to have control over the outer column and an intersection as well. Okay, so I'm going to put in the intersection. So I've now got two columns in here. And then there's an there's an outer section, which we we use for the structure initially. Okay, so now I'm going to click on that outer section. All right, and we can now start making changes to this outer section. So what I want to do in this outer section here is I want it to be uh, full width. I don't want it to be boxed. Okay, so I want it to be full width. So I'll go all the way across. So it gives me a little bit more width there. Uh, columns gap is fine. The height is fine. I'm going to leave all this as is. Okay. Now we're going to go to our styling. And there really isn't anything here to do on styling. So we don't really have any uh, thing that we want to add here. There's no backgrounds or anything. But when I go to advanced, I notice that there are there is a margin right here. So there seems to be you know quite a gap. And I want to close that gap. And the way I'm going to close that gap is I'm just going to give it a zero padding. Okay, zero padding. And I'm going to make an update now so that it saves it. Okay, great. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to now insert our phone number and our address. So to do that, we're going to go to our elements. I'm going to search for the uh, icon widget which is this right here. And I'm going to drag this in there. So there it is. Actually, that sorry, that's incorrect. I don't I don't want the icon. Let's, uh, let's remove that. Sorry. What we actually want is the icon box. The icon box gives us an icon and some text just like that. Okay? icon and some text. So if we look at our source site here, we've got a phone number and a phone icon. So we're going to go ahead and turn this into that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to click on edit. I'm first I'm going to change the icon. And when you click on this, you get a choice of icons and there are lots of different icons here. You can even upload your own, but we don't need to do that. We're just going to go ahead and type in phone. We're going to select this one and insert. Now our phone is there. Excellent. Uh, in the view, we notice that we have options of it being stacked, which looks like that, or framed, which looks like that. We're just going to leave it as it is. Okay. If you scroll down, you have the title and description, and this is where we're going to insert our phone number. So I'm just going to grab the call to action here. And here's our phone number. Okay. I'm going to delete the description. We don't need that. And then the icon icon position right now is positioned to the top. So here we're going to switch the icon position to the left, right? We'll leave the HTML tag the same, and then we'll go to our styling so that we can style the icon and the text. So when you go to style, style is where you control all the coloring and spacing and, and everything else, uh, size. So now we're going to start making those changes, okay? Now the primary color that we have here uh, right now, it's defaulting to this blue. So I'm going to go back here. And if you have the developer tool for Chrome, you can actually inspect these items to be able to get the colors here. So I, I know what the colors are, but I just want to show you how to, how to acquire these. So I'm going to use the inspector tool here. 
and I can see the color. And maybe we'll do a video on using the developer tools for Chrome, but you can basically get information very easily from there. And we're going to, we're going to come here and we're going to change our color to that. Okay. Excellent. Whoops. Okay. We're going to change our color. Then uh, our sizing it looks pretty big. So I'm going to shrink this. Uh, I'm sorry. This is our spacing. Sorry. This is fine. This was actually fine where it was. So we'll leave it at 15. But the size of the icon, we're going to make smaller. Okay. Smaller. Right there. 23. You know, what I really like about Elementor is I, we can do all kinds of great stuff here. We can turn our icon around as much as we like. This is really cool. I haven't seen this in any other builder. But this is really, really nice. So if I wanted this to be straight up, I could, but I'll leave it this way. Okay. Now, now that we're done configuring our icon, let's go ahead and configure the content. So for the content, we want the same thing. I want our color to be the same color as the icon. Okay. Spacing looks fine. On the topography, this is where we select the type of uh, font that we're going to be using and the size. So when I click on this, I'm going to use I'm just going to leave it at default. And I'm going to change the size to a 15, maybe a little bit bigger. 16, 16 is fine. Okay, and uh, the weight is fine. We're not going to transform it into anything and we'll leave the spacing the same. Um, maybe 18. All right, there we go. It looks good it kind of matches our Thing. We can see that the alignment for the content is to the top, which is which is great. Okay, you can also make it in the middle, which is also nice. I'm gonna leave it in the middle. Okay, this looks really good. All right, and now we're pretty much done. So we've created our phone number, and it looks just like the other one. Great. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now is we need to create the address, and to save us some time, instead of just Doing, going through the motions of everything that we just did, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this uh, phone number, and you see this edit link right here for the uh, for it, this edit icon. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to click on duplicate, and it gives me a second one. And from here, I can now drag it to the next column. Okay, so now that it's in the next column, I can then make my changes. So if I select this, we go to we go to the uh, content. We're going to change this to a map marker. So uh, it's a map marker, which is this right here. Insert that. And then we're going to grab our address, which is 123 Cafe Street in Roseville, California. There we go. OK. And now we have our address. Now we have our phone number. Now the only thing left to do is for us to First, put it above the header, but also have it have this same kind of spacing. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to come here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some columns in between. OK, the so first thing I want to do here is I want to make sure that our column is full width. Excuse me, not not full width. That our column stretches out to the full length of the there we go almost to the logo. So I'll put this at 1200 for the content width. Keep everything else the same. And then now we're going to add some columns in between. So right click on the column icon and click on add new column. That gives us a little bit of spacing. All right, I'm going to then use the spacing to move my items closer to the edge right there. Okay. So you can literally drag the columns into into different sizes. And we're now done creating our utility top area with the phone number and the address. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom where it says update in green for this Elementor build out. I'm going to click update. And now I can click this hamburger icon and click exit to the dashboard. And that will then take me to the dashboard. Okay. Now, if we visit the, the if we visit the if we visit the website, we still don't see it above our header, right? 
So there's a couple of things that we need to do to be able to add it to the header. First, go to the dashboard, go to anywhere Elementor, click on all templates, and here's our short code. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this short code. And now I'm going to go to the front end of the website. And here I'm gonna click on our customizer. The customizer will open up the Astra theme options for us, okay? And in the Astra theme options, you're gonna have the capability of being able to add or hook in items. Okay, so what I'm looking for here are the hooks. And as you can see right here, we have one of them, uh, one of the options called hooks. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna click on header. And here you can see the hooks that are available for the header. So we have a WP head, before header, and after header. And I'm gonna paste that short code right there before the header. And there it is. I'm gonna click publish. I'm gonna exit out of it. And as you can see, we now have our phone number and our address hooked into the uh, above header area. So we have now completed the addition of these two items above the header. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build out the header with the logo and the menu items here and this really cool looking, uh, sort of whipped cream looking divider. Okay. okay, so let's get right to it. So the header of this theme is controlled by Astra, right? So we're gonna be using the Astra header options to develop our header here. And if we look at our website that we're trying to build here, we have a logo here on the left and we have our navigation menu on the right with a call to action, contact us button all the way to the right. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be developing uh, for this uh, part of the tutorial. Okay, so let's get right to it. Uh, to access the header options, well, actually, before we access the header options, one of the things that we need to do is we need to create these pages. So we've got a home page and about us page. It looks like we also have cakes, coffee, and muffins, okay? And the contact us page. So we need to build out these pages or at least create the pages for them and then we can add the content later on. So what we're going to do first is we're gonna create the navigation menu. So I'm gonna go here and there's lots of ways to be able to do this. You can do it directly in the dashboard by going to dashboard, pages, add new. Okay, and right here we're gonna go ahead and just type about. So we'll do the about page. And I'm just gonna publish these for now. I'm not gonna be wor worrying about putting in the content or designing the page. I just wanna get the, uh, I just wanna get the site map done so that we have those pages ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another one, new page. Coffee, publish. And then a new page again, cakes. Publish. created two muffins. I say this would be contact, not muffins. So contact, update. Okay, so we've got our pages created. So when I go to the front end of the website now, I can see my pages about cakes, coffee, contact, homepage, and muffins. Okay, so it's all set up and created. The next thing that I wanna do is I want this to be in the order that I would like it to be, right? So this is what you what you get by default. So if we go to our page here, you can see we have home first, about, cakes, coffee, muffins, and then contact us. So I want it, I want to have have it in this same order. So to do that, we're gonna go to um, we're gonna go to the dashboard here, go to appearance, menus, and we're gonna create a menu. So we're gonna call this our main menu, create menu, okay? 
I'm going to click on view all so I can see all the pages and I'm going to select home about cakes, coffee, contact, muffins, add to the menu. Okay. And then I'm going to arrange this the way that it, that I would like it to be. So I'm going to get rid of the, I'm going to change the label here. So it's just going to say home about is fine. Cakes, coffee. Uh, we're going to move contact. Matter of fact, we're going to remove contact because we're going to, we're going to, get to the contact page a little bit different. So I'm going to remove it for now. So it should be home about cakes, coffee, muffins. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and save this menu. I'm going to select that this is the primary menu so that the theme knows that. And now when I visit the page, you will see now that it is organized in the way that we want it to be. Okay. Now we can start designing our header. So to do that, just go ahead and click on the customizer, customize link. And we're going to select header from the Astra options. You're going to go to site identity. And here it's going to give us a chance to be able to upload a logo. So I'm going to select a logo. And I, I have a logo ready. So we're going to go to this one right here. Here's our logo. Okay, that looks good. Select, and now it's in there. It's asking us if we want. I'm just going to stretch this out. Yeah, let's grab the image. And now our logo is there. Okay, this is awesome. So now we want to size this so that it is a good size on the page. So I'm just going to use the slider here to bring it down a bit, about the same width as the call to action at the, at the top here. Okay, so I'm going to make that the same width. Next, we have a site icon. So we can create a site icon if we want to. Um, let's see if I have something for a site icon. What do we have that we could use for a site icon? Let's just go with this brewed coffee. Yeah, we'll just use that for now. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think this is too big. Let's not use that. Let's just use the logo again. We'll select this and we will use the coffee section here. Stretch it out just a bit. Hmm. Perfect. Crop the image. And that's now our site icon for the tabs. Then in the site title, the we have the option to display the site title and display the inline logo and, and site title. I don't want this here, right? So I already have the text and the logo here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove the display site title part. Uncheck that. And I'm going to leave everything else as is here. This looks pretty good already. And I'm going to publish it. Okay, so now we have our logo in place. It looks pretty good, right? Now we're going to go to our menu, primary menu. And if you notice in this menu, we have a contact us button. Okay. we have this contact us button and I want that same button. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to grab the color code here for this button. Okay. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to say, I want the last item in the menu to be a button. Okay. So there's my button right there. The button text will say, contact us. The button link will be, uh, we make the button link site that's clipped in to Um, slash contact and here's what asking us if you want to use the theme button or header button I, I just leave it as the um, theme button but I want to customize the style of this button okay I don't want I don't like the, the blue whoops let's fix that so I'm gonna customize the button style here the color uh, 
background color will be this. The text color is fine. And then on hover, I would like the text, the background color to be similar, but a little lighter. Okay. Great. This is now done. So now when we uh, go back here, if we look at this one, we'll notice that our button has these rounded corners. And on ours, we have these square corners. So we don't want that. We want to be able to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, to our global section here. We're going to select buttons. And we're going to click on the border. And on the border, we're going to change this to 20. And I'm going to keep increasing it, maybe 40. There we go. That gives us a nice rounded button. Okay. And publish. Excellent. So now we're getting really close. Okay. We do have to do one more thing. We have to make sure that our hover links. So if I go back to the home, that our hover links are the same color as the button here to create some uniformity. So in our design. So I'm going to go back to uh, colors, base colors, and the theme color that I want to use for the, uh, for the theme color, actually, I will use this and the link color will be the same. Okay. This is one thing that's awesome about Astra. You can set up everything from one central place. Okay. And publish. Okay. So this is looking really, really good. All right, and so now we have created our header, we have our logo, we have our navigation section over here, and everything looks great. So now that we're done with the header, we can now move on to the development of the featured hero area. Okay, so now that we're done building out our header, the next part that we're gonna build, if we look at our website here, is this area, this featured area here. We've got this cupcake picture in the background, we have a statement here and we also have a contact us button. Okay. And then we notice that this area, we have these uh, sort of beautiful waves going on here. It kind of looks like whipped cream, uh, making everything look extra delicious. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to, how we're going to create this entire effect um, on our site. So we're going to go to ours here and we're going to click on edit with Elementor. You can just do it right here from the home page. It now opens up the editor for Elementor. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a section here. So I'm just going to add a structure and I'm just going to add the one column structure like that. And now that I've added that, I'm going to select that I want this to be full width. Okay. I want it to stretch the full length of the page. And then I'm going to add a background. And so we're going to click on style. Okay. So we're going to go from here, style, and we're going to select the classic background. We are going to choose an image and the image that we want is the cupcake cupcake image here. And all these images that we're using are completely free. I'll show you where we, uh, where we get them from. These are royalty free images that you can use. And we've now populated our image. Okay. Now we really can't see much because the image is in here, but we're going to set up a few things real quick. First is I want the image to be center center. Okay. Okay, good. Now we can now kind of see the, Cupcakes are showing up. Okay. Uh, on attachment, I want it to be fixed, meaning it's going to stay in the same spot when this area scrolls. Okay. So I want it to be fixed under the repeat. I'm going to say no repeat. I just want it to be the one image and under the size, I'm going to select cover. So it contains, so it's contained in the full width or area of the screen. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the layout. And what I, what I'm going to do is under the height section here, where it says default, I'm going to do a minimum height. Okay. And this may just be temporary. I just may need to do this so that I can see what I'm putting in there. And I'm going to increase this height here. We're going to go, we're going to keep going right about there. Yeah. Right about there. That's good. Okay. 
All right, and we might change this. So, but I'm doing this now so that I can see what I'm working with. Actually, let's make it just a tad smaller, 820. Okay, here we go. Awesome. So now we now have our nice little structure, okay? The next thing that I wanna do is, you remember these nice, beautiful waves that we have here? We're gonna do the same thing. These are called shape dividers. And this is a really cool feature that comes even in the free version of Elementor. So we're gonna to go to style and right here on the under the options here, we're gonna select shape divider. And you have the option of having a top shape divider and a bottom. We're gonna do both. So we're gonna start with the top. And the one that I'm going that we're using is mountains. You see that? Mountains. That actually looks looks pretty nice already. I don't even even need to change anything. Uh, but you could, you know, you could increase the width if you want to, or leave it the same. You can increase the height, make it taller or smaller. So we can just do just a little bit, maybe just like that. Uh, like this is good. There. Yeah, I, I like it to be kind of dramatic. It just looks different than that. Okay, great. All right, this looks good. So next we're gonna do the bottom one. Okay, so select bottom, mountains. And uh, we'll do we'll do 100 for the width, and the height looks really good so far. But we'll just match the height of the other one, which was 192. Okay, that way we're uniform. All right, this looks really good, perfect. So now that we're done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and click on update so I can save my work, and we can kind of preview it by closing this so we can see what we're working with. This looks really good. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add our statement, okay? So to add the statement, you're gonna go to the tray for Elementor and you're gonna click on these, uh, these square buttons right here. It's gonna open up your elements, okay? You could've, we could've also done that by clicking on this plus sign, which, but you really can't see it, so. But it opens up your elements. And what I like to do when it comes to this is I like to add an intersection into the column. So this is like adding a column inside of a column. So we've got this general layout column here. Now we're gonna add an intersection to contain our text. Whenever you add an intersection in Elementor, it typically will give you two columns, okay? So I have one column here and one column here. And I know you can't really see this that well, so what we're going to do is we're gonna go back up to the main container here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, under style, under background, sorry, on the background overlay. Okay, on the background overlay, we are going to create an overlay color. And uh, we can just start with black to begin. This kind of has a nice little brown hue to it. So I typically like to match my overlays. Uh, and, you can, and you can play with this. Uh, you know, we got a nice little red hue in there. So I'm gonna do this. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna darken it just a little bit, just a little darker. Okay, and that looks good. And right now it's at 50%, but you know, you can darken this more if you want. And what will happen is it allow you to be able to see the text more. So we'll just, we'll keep it at 0 0.65. And we can always adjust that later. Uh, nah, let's lighten that up a bit so we can see the delicious cupcakes too. Okay, so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go just, yeah, that's good. All right, and now you can see the columns that I was talking about, okay? So I'm gonna select these columns now. I need to be able to fit my text in here, so I'm gonna delete one of these columns by right-clicking on the column icon and selecting Delete. Okay, so now that's deleted. And then I can click on the plus sign here and to open up my elements. I'm gonna grab a heading, all right? And the heading that we have here is, is that it says, we serve the best coffee, cakes, and muffins in town. Come visit our cafe today. We want the same text here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that text and you can literally do it inside the editor. I can copy and paste it in here. Now, some of the challenges you'll explain, you'll like achieve with copying and pasting sometimes is that when you do that, it will paste in uh, the, it will paste in some code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this. I'm gonna go to the actual box itself and I'm gonna paste that in there, okay? Perfect. This looks really good. Okay, so now we can go ahead and style it. Okay, so we've put in the text. Uh, let's make sure this text is centered. There it is. 
And uh, we're going to leave the size as is for now. And we're just going to go to style. We want the text color to be white so that we can see it. All right. We want the topography. Uh, we're going to change the font family. So this font family, I believe, is croissant one. There we go. And we're going to increase the size a little bit so people can see what we're talking about. Okay. So let's see how close we are. Good. So I noticed that this is pretty wide and there's some space, considerable space between the lines of text. So that spacing is controlled by the line height. So we can increase the line height here a little bit. There we go. Right there is good. 1.5. This looks really good. And then the other thing that we have going for us on this side of everything is that the hmm, the button we have this button contact us button okay so i'm going to go back to our page we're going to go back to elements by clicking on this square at the top corner here and we're going to add a button okay here's a button i'm going to drag the button put it right underneath and we're going to select it and start customizing our button so the very first thing we're going to do under the contact under the content here is we're going to say contact us, just like the other one says. Whoops. We're going to center our button. Okay. We can even add our page in here. So I'm going to click here and do this, and we'll type type in contact, and it will find the contact page that we've already created. So that's now linked. All right. And I, uh, let's see, should we do a medium size button? Okay, that's fine. Medium is fine. This is great. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the colors and the styling of the button. So I'm going to click on the next thing here, which is styling. We are going to click on topography. We're going to leave it at the default, but we are going to increase the size of the text just a little bit right there. Excellent. Um, and then if I look over here, I notice that the weight is a little light. So I'm going to make my weight light as well. So we're going to go 300. There it is. Okay. Now we also want to do the background color of the button. So the text color is going to be white. The background uh, color is going to be our, uh, our normal color that we have here. So I can go ahead and just check using my inspector tool. See what that coloring was. There it is. And I will copy that. And I'll come here and I'll paste that in. Fantastic. Okay. The other thing is that we have a square button here, but we really want a rounded button. So to make this rounded button, I'm going to come here to the border radius and we're going to make this 50 pixels. Okay. Are we looking very good, really close. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to topography and I'm going to reduce this a little bit to, I'm going to come down to 16, maybe 18, maybe 20 there. Okay. Reduce that a little bit. Okay. This is looking really, really nice. Okay. So we've got our contact us button. We've got our statement over here. And we have our background in place. And if we were to preview this now, we would see that we're really close to the original site. Now, you might notice that this site has a little bit of a darker um, overlay. And we have a little bit of a brown overlay. I actually prefer the brown, so I'm going to keep this like this. But I do want to increase the spacing between the, uh, the words and the heading. The more spacing that we have, the more the, uh, the text in above the image or overlaying the image tends to uh, pop out a little bit more. So let's do that. So I'm going to come here to the main container. I'm going to go back to content. Sorry. Uh, main container. Go to layout. And we're going to increase this even more. Even more. Even more. All right, right there looks pretty good. I'm going to actually make this nine. Let's make it 980. All right. We're going to update. And if we go and we view the page, 
we can see that our coffee cakes and muffins website is coming together really really nicely okay really really nicely let's go back to the other one when i refresh this page i'm noticing that there is some animations going on here so yes adding a little pizzazz to your page with in terms of animation makes it just seem so much more professional and well thought out so let's go ahead and start adding that anima animation now. So I'm gonna go back, click on Edit with Element Elementor, and we're going to select the animations that we want. So I'm gonna select the actual text here. I'm gonna to go to Style, I'm sorry, go to Advanced. And under Advanced, you will see Motion Effects, another powerful feature of Elementor. And this is in the free version, by the way. Okay, Motion Effects. So we want an entrance animation, and I believe that animation was it zooming in. So you can see the, te the test right here. So it zooms in. Uh, you can zoom in downwards, boom, like that. We can zoom in upwards like that. We're just going to do the regular zoom in. All right, that looks pretty good. Then we're going to do the same thing for the button. Okay, I want my button. So we're going to go to uh, select the button, go to advanced, go to motion effects. We're gonna to go to the entrance animation and we're going to do actually a zoom in down like that, okay? And that's really all you need to do. Click update, go to the hamburger menu, select view the page and there's our animation looking really good, okay? So next we're gonna go build out the rest of these sections. So the sections that we need to build out now is gonna be this three column section so storing the uh, the products that we offer, the services that we offer, or the the food that's offered, um, a little about us section, and then a menu with pricing and the name of the items on the menu. We have a testimonial section, and then we have our footer, and we will be done with the home page, and we can move on to the internal pages and complete our websites. So let's begin the creation of the rest of our home page. If we look at our source site here, we will notice that we have this section. So this is the next section that we're going to create. We've got three columns. Each one has an image, a title, uh, a little blurb of text, and a button. So um, this should be fairly easy and quick to create. So let's go do it. So we're going to go to our website. I'm going to click on Edit with Elementor. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new section. I like to add the one column section first and configure that to be full width. So we're gonna to go to our layout, content width. We're gonna set that to full width, okay? Then I'm going to click on the uh, plus sign on the inside of that and I'm, that's gonna open up my elements in the element or tray. I'm gonna drag the inner section element into that top container. And then I'm gonna add an additional column. So we have three columns, right? So if I right click on the column icon and click on add new column, now we will have three columns. And we're now pretty much set to create this uh, section here that we see here, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start creating it. So the first one is the delicious coffee. We've got a delicious coffee image. So let's go ahead and uh, get that set up. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this text and I'm going to go to our element selector. We're gonna select an image. You can always just run a search for our image. Okay, I'm gonna grab this image here and drop it in. Okay, then I'm going to add my image. So we have an image of someone mixing some coffee. So let's go here and let's find that image. There it is. Okay. I'm gonna open this up. Okay. And we will insert that image. So there we have it. Okay. And the other thing that we notice is that this image is styled a little bit. It's got this curve on the top left side and this curve on the bottom right. So we're gonna go to our style for the image. We're gonna to go to the border radius, and on the top left, we're gonna make that 100. Oh, sorry, let's unhook these. The top right will be zero, and the bottom will be 100, 
and the left will be zero. And now we have the that say that effect, sort of a nice curved effect. Okay. Then we're gonna now we're gonna now go back to our elements and we're gonna grab a title. So I'm gonna grab a heading title here. Okay. And this is says our delicious coffee. So Okay, that looks like it's centered. And ours is blue, so what we're going to do is we're gonna get ours to be the same color as the buttons, it's also the same color as um, the other text on the site. So if I go back here, um, we're going to look up this color using the inspect tool. And the color is uh, E8256C. Okay. Now, if you notice throughout this tutorial, we've been using this inspect tool and, and we're doing these colors. We do have a more advanced Elementor uh, video coming out pretty soon. Uh, however, I want to I want to show this because I think it's important. If we want to save time, one of the things we can do here is we can actually go to our Elementor settings, the general setting, settings, and you do that by going to that uh, hamburger icon here. If you click on the default colors, you can see the default colors that keep showing up. So if you notice our buttons keep coming up as green, our our headings keep coming up as blue, and the text keep coming up as black or gray. So we can actually change this into what we want it to be, right? So now I want this, I want all my headings from now on to be this color, okay? And I want all my buttons to be the same color, similar color, all right? And I'm just going to click apply and you'll notice that from this point on anytime I add a heading. So let's say I added a heading here. The heading is now the color that are uh, of our palette. Okay. So we don't have to keep changing the color every single time, but I'm going to delete this for now. So I just thought that was a really good point to share. So next is adding the text. I'm going to come here. I'm going to drag in some text. Nice and easy. Okay, so we have some text, whoops. Okay, we have some text and then we need a button. So I'm gonna go back, we're going to grab a button. Okay, we're gonna center this button and we're going to style it by going to style and we want the border radius for this button. Let's un unhook that. Okay, so the border radius right and left will be 40. Okay, so now we have our, our button. So if we look at our source site, see we're, we're pretty close, okay, awesome. So now that we've, oh, I didn't notice. Okay, so now that we've done this, we've created this section, we now need to create these other three sections, okay? These are the three columns. So to do that, we're just going to save ourselves some time and we're going to duplicate everything. Now, I can literally uh, right click here okay and duplicate the column itself two more times and delete these extra columns and that will save us some time there we go okay so now we can go through and start changing these into what they're supposed to be so the next one is our mouth watering cake pancakes Okay, so we come here to that text. We're gonna change it to our mouth watering pancakes. And then the next one is our famous muffins. Come here, select that. Okay, and then we need to change the images to match. I'm gonna change the image, upload, select our pancakes. Go ahead and insert. And then we have our famous muffins. So our famous muffins. I'm gonna go here, select the image, 
change the image by uploading from your computer. And insert that. And there we have it. Okay. So now we have our columns in place. The next thing we want to do is if you notice, we have some really good spacing here to sort of make everything look really nice. Okay, so we're going to create the same spacing. And also we're going to adjust our text so that everything fits on one line. So I'm going to come here to our page here. and We need to create some spacing between the columns. So I'm going to go to each column, click on advanced. And we're going to use the margin um, attribute. And we're going to give it a 20 pixel margin. And go to the next one. Do the same thing. 20 pixels all around. Okay. And then our text. So we want this to all fit on one line. So I'm going to look here. Whoops. Looks like we moved our text by accident. Let's move that back. Select the text. Go to style. Under topography, I'm going to change this to 16 pic. Sorry. Change this to 20 pixels, maybe 24, 24 pixels, okay? And here's another really cool thing you can do in Elementor. I can literally, uh, I can copy the style here by right-clicking, selecting copy, and going to the next one and paste the style. See how that works? Paste the style. That way I don't have to go through each and every single one uh, making those changes. All right. So now we, I still have this on the second line. So that means that I need to make this smaller. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to actually change the text. So right about there. So it looks like we're at a 22 pixels. That's really what we want. Great. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to right click on the other ones. And I'm going to paste the style so that it's everything's the same. Right click, paste the style and we're good. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to add these uh, animations. So let me go ahead and update what I've done so far. Add these animations. So if you notice, if we refresh the screen here, see how the, see how the images animate like that? We want the same thing. So I'm going to do this to the first one. Go to Advanced by selecting the image. Click on the Advanced tab for that image. Motion Effects. And we've got a Zoom In effect. It looks like that. Okay. So then I'm going to then copy that and paste it on the other ones by pasting the style. It's a really, really neat feature of Elementor. And this is in the free version, ladies and gentlemen. This is in the free version. There we go. All right, so now that looks pretty good. I'm going to update. And let's check out what we've done so far. So we will view the page. And it's coming in pretty good. And there it is. Looks really nice. So now we're going to build out the rest of the page by building out the remaining sections uh, of the page, which then, which, which only remains this about section, the testimonial section and the footer section. Okay. So let's build out the rest of our page. So if we go to our source site here, we want to build this section. Okay. So one of the things that you'll notice is that this section is actually quite similar to the featured area, except it looks like we've got two, oh, three columns here. So we've got three columns here, one, two, three, and we have the sort of same wavy uh, shape dividers and so on, right? So let's go ahead and, and do this. So if I go to our site, and this is our site now, uh, we're going to click on Edit with Elementor. So what we're going to do in this case is we are going to go to this top featured area, and one of the things that Elementor, one of the features Elementor has is you have the ability to save a section or page or even a column as a template and then be able to 
um, recall that uh, at a later time or use it anywhere else in your website. So let me show you what I mean. So here is this top area. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to right click right here on the edit section. I'm just going to right click on it. Whoops. Let's right click. Okay. And I'm going to click on save as template. All right. And we're going to call this, I'm just going to call it wavy section and save. Okay. So now I've saved it as wavy section. I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to scroll down to this area here where we typically add in our structures. Okay. But instead of doing a structure, I'm going to click on this file folder. And you can see here we have the wavy sections saved in here. And then I'm going to click on insert. And it's asking me if I want to import the document settings of the template. Yes, I do. So I'm going to say yes. Okay. And if you notice, what happens now is it has now inserted a duplicate of that template right here below. Okay. This saves us a ton of time from having to redesign everything and go through all the uh, motions that we went through before. So now I, all I need to do is basically change the background. So I'm going to go here, select this, go to style. Okay. We're going to select the background and we're going to select the image that we want. So upload, select and the image we want is this image. Okay. Open that. All right. Okay. So now we have our image. All right. Then we have these, uh, two, these columns here. So we don't want this. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, actually matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, delete this item here. And we're going to delete this button. So now we're left with this one column, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into three columns by duplicating it. Right click, duplicate. So now we have the three columns. And if we look here at our source site, we have this um, about coffee, cakes and muffins section, which is a little bit wider. And then we have these uh, blurbs here with the pricing and everything. So let's go ahead and recreate this. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Elementor. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna make this a little wider than the others. Okay. Kind of like that. And we need a heading. So let's go to our elements. I'm gonna grab a heading, <clears throat> put that in there. And we're gonna change this text. I'm also going to style it to be white and I want the content to be, uh, okay, actually that's fine. Then we're going to add some text using the text editor. Okay. There we are. I'm going to grab this text here. This is just some dummy text. Paste that in there. We'll style it. We want the text color to be white so we can see it. Okay, now that looks pretty good. And the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to create this uh, this menu. So we've got the coffee and donuts, pancakes, stacks, and muffins. All right. Now, if you notice, the text is right in line with these menu items. And the uh, coffee, cakes, and muffins heading is above that. So we're going to make sure we have the same layout here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another intersection. I do that by going to the elements. I'm going to pull an intersection here, and I'm going to drop it right above these other ones. And then I'm going to drag my title above that. And move this in a bit. All right, there we go. So now we need to do this layout right here. Okay, so if I go to Elementor, I'm going to go back to my elements. And what I'm looking for now is 
an image box. What an image box is, is basically an image with some text. So here it is right here. I'm going to drag it in. Okay. And then we're going to start configuring this. So the first thing we want to do is we want the image to be on the left. Okay. And then if we look here, we've got you know, red cup of coffee with the price and then some text. All right. So we're going to come here and title in the description, red cup of coffee. And then it looks like there's just two lines of text there. Okay. And uh, the tag, we're going to leave the tag the same, but what we're going to do is we're going to change the topography by going to content, select topography, and we're going to make the text fit in the box just like that. So about 18 pixels will fit. Okay. We're also going to change the color to white. And we are going to change the text, the description color also to white. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is for our image, we're going to change the image to that cup of coffee we saw. Okay, so there's our coffee. Okay, so now what's left is for us to configure our image. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to my style. Here's my image. So this is 30 pixels. I'm going to increase this be a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to adjust my I'm going to adjust my columns. Okay. Just like that. And that looks pretty good. Right there. Okay. Awesome. So now that we've created, created this first one, it's now pretty easy to duplicate this by right clicking, duplicate, right click, duplicate. And we just simply have to just move these over, right click and duplicate. Okay. So now our menu is in place. Now all we need to do is simply change the uh, change the text, uh, change the images and the text of the menu items. And we are all set. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got the red cup of coffee on this one. And then the next one are the donuts. So let's change that here. Change our image to the image of donuts. Pancake stack and muffins. This is our pancake stack.
our minds. Okay. So this looks pretty good. So the one thing I noticed is that over here we have them as, a, as squares. And here they seem to be more portrait size. So what we're going to do is going to fix that. I'm going to come here and we'll go to image size. I'm going to say I want it as a thumbnail. Okay, so that immediately fixed that. And then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to now do my favorite thing, which is to basically copy the style and then move to the next one and paste the style. Okay, so everything should be equally 150. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to building the next portion. Let's clean this up just a little bit. There we go. Now we can move on to building the next portion, which is the testimonials section. Now, before we go building the testimonials section, we just have to make sure we do a little bit of housekeeping first. So one of the things that you want to do is if we notice we have here a lot of spacing between our title and our description, we can control that uh, in the, so when you select this uh, image box here, just go to style, and uh, when I minimize the image section and open up the content section, under the content, content section, you can actually control the distance between the, the title and the description. So we're just going to close this distance, make it bring it down to a one. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. Okay, content. And we'll bring that down to a one. And I believe we can copy the style here, yes, and we can paste the style, okay, so it looks similar, there we go, okay, and then somehow, somehow I do feel as though these um, images are really big. So one of the things you can do, and you don't have to do this, if you're happy with it the way it looks, you can leave it as so. But one of the things you can do is you can actually reduce the width percentage. So right now it's at a 47. I can actually reduce this down to about a 30%, okay? And I like it at 30%. It kind of fits well with the, the description. So I'm gonna copy this style and I'm gonna paste it Oops, looks like I moved that over by accident, sorry. And I'm going to paste that style. Paste the style. You see, everyone, this just saves us so much time. And then I also wanna create some distance here uh, at the bottom. So I'm done under advanced, I'm gonna uncheck the linked measurements and here on the bottom margin I'm just going to add a 40 pixel uh, 40 pixel margin okay and then I'm going to do the same thing here advanced unlink it 40 pixels good okay now the other thing that you'll notice this final thing is that when we scroll down you see how we have this motion here um, for this section so we have sliding in from the left, sliding in from the bottom, sliding in from the top. So we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to come here. We're going to come to this column right here. And I want this column under advanced. Go to motion effects. I want this to slide in from the left. Great. And then I also want this item to slide in from the left as well. Oops, 
make sure I grab it. Motion effects. And we're going to slide in from the left. Awesome. And then uh, this column here, I want the entire column to slide in from the bottom. Advanced, motion effects, and we're going to slide in from the slide in from the bottom. So sliding up there, and this will slide in downwards. There we go. Select advanced, motion effects. There, just like that. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna update all that. And so now when we when we view this, sorry, we view this as a page, it, it has all the motion in there, which looks great. Okay, awesome. So now let's go ahead and create the testimonial section. So here it says what our customers say about us. And we've got a uh, quote icon, some text, picture of a customer, their name. This looks really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the testimonials module that we have here. So it's actually very easy to create. So we have this testimonial module. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a section. Uh, again, I add our main section here. And then I'm going to drag in an intersection. Okay. Then we're going to add our testimonial. Okay. And so in our testimonial, we want Jane Renner, it's the customer. Okay. So Going to change the image here, upload, select, and we're going to find Jane, who is right here. Okay, there she is, and change the name. Okay, and then we also have. Uh, an icon, code icon. So we'll add the same thing. So to do that, just go back to your elements and we're going to find a simple icon. Drag it in. And we're going to change this to quotes. There it is. Insert, and it's already there. Okay. So now all I need to do is I'm just going to duplicate this to make it easy. I'll duplicate the entire column and I'm going to delete this empty column. Okay. And then to make it even more, more nice, we're going to create some spacing. So this column here under advanced, we're going to do 20 pixel margin. For this column, same thing, 20 pixel margin. And now our section is complete. So the only other thing we need to do is add our animations. So I'm just going to add simple animation under motion effects. We're going to have this zoom in nicely, just like that. And then I'm going to do it for the second one. So, so our page is coming together really nice. Can you believe this is all done with the free version of Elementor? It's really awesome, really, really awesome tool. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and save this work. And uh, we're in the home stretch here. So finally, the footer area. And I'll show you how we create this footer area and hook it right in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish out this home page. Okay, so for the final part of this uh, home page, we're gonna build out this footer right here. Okay, so we've got a, an icon box with the name of the company, an address, phone number, 
and then a button for contact us and then we have this uh, Google map over here so and then uh, we have the same sort of wavy um, divider going on and the image in the background okay and the image is parallax meaning it's fixed in place so we're gonna build out this last piece and our home page will be done let's get right to it so let's go to our site that we're building which is this one it does not have the bottom area here okay so the first thing that we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take care of this footer here. So we have this dark footer with the white text. And for us to be able to change that, this is controlled by Astra. So to change this, we're going to go to Customize. And we will go to the footer. We'll click on the footer bar. Okay, so we can see all this information here. Let's scroll down. So the footer bar. Okay, and we want to change the color to white. So we want this to be a white color. Okay. And then we also want to change the color of our text. So we scroll here. The text color will be dark like that. And now I'll make my link color. Well, actually, you know what? We want our text color to be the color of our uh, sort of our theme here, which is at the ease right there, a little darker right there. So we will make this the text color. Okay. And then um, we also want, oh, I thought I changed the background color. That, that was a border color. So let's get rid of, we don't want a border here. So I'm going to clear that, no border. Uh, border size will be zero. Okay, and then the background color is what I wanted to change and I want this to be white, just like that. Perfect. Publish our changes so that it's saved and we'll exit out of the customizer. Great. Now we can go ahead and build out our footer layout, okay? So the footer the footer layout that we have is actually built with Anywhere Elementor. It's an Anywhere Elementor template and we will hook it into the Astra theme. So we're gonna go to, um, to, go to the uh, back end, to the back, uh, to the admin section, and we're gonna click on Add New under the Anywhere Elementor Templates tab. And we're going to call this site footer. Okay. And then we will click publish so we can publish this right away. And then edit with Elementor. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I want this same sort of wavy look here. This divider and this background. And I already have a template saved in here, so this is a great thing about Elementor, we can use one of our templates that's saved, wavy section, and we're gonna insert that. Click yes, here it is, okay? So now we just need to modify a few things. First thing is the height of this is really tall, so we're gonna change that by selecting the section, going to the layout, click clicking on the menu on height, and we're going to close this just a little bit. Okay. And then I also noticed that the divider isn't as dramatic. This is a little bit more stretched out, so we will do the same thing with the divider. So we'll go to the same section. We'll go to Advanced. Um, excuse me. We're going to go to Style. Okay. And we're going to go to Shape Divider. And we're going to stretch out our width just a little bit here. And we're going to reduce our height just a little bit there. So let's see how close we are. We're pretty close. Okay, maybe a little more stretch in the width area and a little bit drop in the height area. Perfect. Okay, and then we're going to do it, do the same thing on the bottom. So 147 and 112. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we have a two column section here. We have a title text, two columns section. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to add columns. And to do that, 
just select the elements icon here. We're going to grab an intersection and I'm going to drag it directly underneath the area here. Okay, so now we have our two columns. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one by clicking delete. I'm uh, sorry, right click, delete. Okay, so now it's gone. I'm going to hang on to this button because we need the button. Matter of fact, I'm going to drag the button in here. Okay, so now we have this extra column here and I'm going to use this column to add my heading. Okay, and the heading will say stop by for coffee. Okay, right? That's what it says. Great. And then we're going to we're going to style this. We want it to be centered. And our style will be color white. Okay. So that's pretty good so far. Next, we need to add uh, the icon blurb. So we need to add this right here. Okay. Coffee, cakes, and muffins, so on and so forth. So we're going to come here. I'm going to go to my elements. I'm going to search for icon box. I'm going to drag the icon box right into that section. We're going to change this icon to the map marker icon, which looks like that. Insert. We will change the heading to that information, coffee, cakes, and muffins. OK. We'll add the address here. OK. We want to go to style. And under style, we're going to make everything white. So the icon is going to be white. The content will also be white. OK, our description is also white. The spacing is a little closer, so it's not as far as the other one was. All right. And we're going to put our phone number onto a separate line. So I can literally click here. And there's our phone number. Just make sure it's like that under the content. Yes, it is. So here we go. Make sure. Huh. All right. Okay. And let me make sure that everything looks here. And then we have some space here between the contact us and the actual content itself. So let's go ahead and add that space. Make sure we have enough spacing. Advanced. I'm going to unhook this and I'm going to add about 50, 50 pixels. Maybe 40, maybe 30. Okay. All right. And then in the next, the next uh, column here, we need to add a map. So I'm going to select my elements again. I'm going to search for map. There's a Google Maps. Go ahead and drag that in here. And we're just going to say our location is Sacramento, California. All right. That's all we have for now. OK. You can see how quickly we're able to create this. Right. So this is all set. Now, the only thing I need to change here is this background. So we have this background with this barista making some coffee. So I'm going to go ahead and change that by selecting the section. Go to background. Click on the existing image that's there. Here's my barista person. I'm going to insert that. And we are dead on this right here. Now I'm also going to reduce the I'm going to reduce the height a little bit here. Looks like the minimum height is so a little bit closer to the text like that. Looks more like a footer. And we are ready. I'm going to go ahead and update this to save it. OK. And then I'm going to exit to the dashboard. So now it's bringing me back to the template, the site footer template. And right here is the short code to be able to insert this. Now we're going to insert this into our Astra theme using the footer hook section. And to access that, you're going to click on customize. Go to hooks, go to footer. And we have the before footer, the after footer, the WP footer. We're going to hook this before the footer, right? So the footer is this section right here. So we need to add it before the footer. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in my short code. 
And there it is. Hit publish. It's now published. And our home page is now complete. A beautiful coffee, cakes, and muffins cafe website, fully built and fully operational. Now I know what you're thinking. What about the internal pages? What about these pages right here that still look like this? Don't worry, I will show you a quick way for us to go ahead and populate these areas. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and build out the inside uh, pages, the internal pages for our website. If we look at our current internal pages, we will notice that this is still following the um, default layout of the Astra theme. So we want that to be different. We want that to change. And the way we're going to do that is if we go to our source site, for instance, and we go to the about page, you'll notice that we have these beautifully designed about pages. We have a page header, we have these two column content areas uh, there. And then when we go to the actual cakes and coffee and muffin pages, you'll notice that we have this sort of menu layout over here. And then we've got one here for coffee and one for muffins. And then on the contact us page, we have just a contact form for them to contact us. So we want to replicate the same thing on our website. So if we go back to our website, uh, we can do the same thing here. Now, the first thing that I would notice is that these pages are not actually prepped for, um, they're not actually prepped for a lay, for a layout, right? So these are still the default sort of blog uh, content area, sidebar area pages. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna change all that. So to do that, I'm actually gonna use the Astra settings to do it. So I'm gonna go to customize. Okay. And I'm going to click on some of, I'm gonna click on the global uh, settings here. I'm going to go to the container and then I'm going to say that for the layout, I want all my layouts to be full width and stretched. Okay. All my layouts will be full width and stretched. And then to be doubly sure, um, I want my pages to be full width and stretch. So you can, you can see that right there, right? It's all done that way. Okay. And then, uh, I'm going to save this. So I'm going to publish this right here. And then I'm going to go back. Then the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to click on sidebar. And I want the default layout for pages, for the pages sidebar to be no sidebar. Okay, so you notice immediately that took away the sidebar. This is the thing that's awesome about Astra. I can make these global changes across the website, depending on whether I'm on a page or a post. Okay, so I've taken care of that. And I think that's all we need to do here on Astra. So we've prepped our page, okay? So now that we're on the um, on the about page now, we can go ahead and start getting it ready for the build out. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna click on edit page for the about page here, okay? I'm gonna go to the default template and I'm gonna say, I want the Elementor full width template. And if you scroll down, you go to the Astra settings. I'm going to say that I don't want the title. I'm going to disable the title here. And we're going to update this. And now I'm going to check to make sure that, yes, I have a full page with no title on it. Okay. So next, I'm going to edit the page. And if I look at my source site over here, and I go to their about page, I'll notice that the about page has this nice little wavy thing going on. So this page header. So I'm gonna replicate that first. Like if you notice, I like to build my websites from top to bottom. So we'll go here. We will say edit with Elementor. Okay, excellent. And then I'm going to use some time-saving strategy here. I'm gonna click on the file here to open up my templates. I'm gonna se select the template, the wavy section template that we saved earlier on in this tutorial. I'm gonna insert that Say yes, okay, and immediately I now have this. I'm going to create the page header with this, okay. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to, we're going to select this, go to layout, and we're going to reduce the minimum height, way down, okay, way down, about, about there, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. Um, I'm going to change the title here, okay, 
and we're going to call this about. Okay, I'm going to delete the button by right clicking, delete, <clears throat> and now we have our about header section. Okay, then the next thing that we need, if we look at our site here, is it looks like we need these two columns. So let's go ahead and build that out. So I'm going to go to Elementor. And maybe what I want to do here is I want to reduce this layout just a little bit more. There. OK. <clears throat> and now we're going to add our layout. So I'm going to click on the plus sign this time. I'm going to add my sort of general container. And then within the general container, click on my elements icon. I'm going to grab an intersection, which will automatically give me two it automatically give me two columns. Okay, so just like we have here, we've got two columns. Same thing on our side. We're gonna have two columns. All right. Now in the main container, I want this to be stretched full width. So I'm gonna go to layout. I'm gonna click on full width. So it, goes, it stretches the full width of the site, of the page, and then I'm going to start styling the adding content to the column. So the first thing that we're going to add is gonna be our title which says our story, okay? So we're gonna to go to our elements, we're gonna grab a heading, and it's gonna go above both columns. Actually, let's keep this boxed so it's in there, okay, great. And we're going to say our story. Okay, then this has an image inside. So we're gonna grab our elements again. I'm gonna pull in an image. Okay, click on the image in the editor to grab the image that we want. And I believe the image that we have in there is this one. Insert it. And then I'm going to go to my second column by clicking on the plus sign. It opens up the elements tray again. And I'm gonna grab a text editor and I'm going to paste in the dummy content for that. Okay. All right, it looks pretty good already. And then if I go back here, I'm seeing that there's some good spacing happening here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want the same good spacing. So I'm going to select on each columns icon, I'm going to go to advanced. And under the margins, I'm going to add 20 pixels. And then on um, this margin, I'm also going to add advanced 20 pixels. Okay. And that looks pretty good. That looks excellent. Okay, great. So now I'm going to replicate the same thing. Let me go here. I'm going to replicate the same thing right below it. And instead of doing the uh, copy, recreating another column and, and so on, I'm literally just going to duplicate this entire section. So I'm going to right click here, click on duplicate, and now it's duplicated. Okay, now it's duplicated. All right. So now we have our mission and vision. Oh, this is misspelled, but that's okay. It's a dummy content. Okay, so from here, <clears throat> our mission and vision using the in page editor there, and then we're just going to switch these around. I'm going to drag this one over here and I'm going to drag this one over there. Okay. So now they are switched around. Okay. And we'll even switch around the, we'll switch around the uh, image. We'll change the image. So let's change the image, reverse the image here, insert. Okay. So now this is looking pretty good. Look how quickly we did that. This is already set. I'm going to go ahead and click update. All right, and now my page is built. So if we preview this, <clears throat> you will see that our page is now built out. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now uh, the next thing that I want to do is I'm noticing that my color here is uh, light. It's a very light colored text. This appears to have a dark color text. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. So what we're going to do then is we're going to click on Edit with Elementor. We're going to go to our, uh, excuse me, we're going to go to our global area here by clicking on that hamburger icon. 
we're going to go to default colors. And we notice that our text color here in our palette is a gray color. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change this to a dark color. And if you notice that now, and I'm going to apply it, now we now have the color that matches the site that we're working from. Okay. So now that that's done, everybody's happy. We can now go ahead and preview. And now we're happy. So now we can move on to the other pages. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to build out our cakes page, our coffee page, our muffins page, and our contact us page. Now, if we go to the source site, you will notice that the cakes pages, the cakes page or the coffee page or so on, we have this this nice little image with a with a title and pricing and a little blurb. And it's kind of arranged in this sort of grid. And then we also have our same uh, page header here following the same thing. So to save us some time, we're going to do some things uh, on our site that will help us build out these pages very quickly. The first thing that I do, and I encourage everyone to do this while you're working with Elementor, and there are other page builders that have this capability, but Elementor has it in the free version, uh, which is great, and a lot of the other ones have them in their paid version. So that's why Elementor is a pretty awesome plugin. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this section. And the way you do that is you right click, okay, click on save as template, and we're gonna call this page header. Save. And now it's in the my templates area. Okay, I'll close that. And if there's anything else you want to save, you can save that as a template as well, save you some time. But for now, all I really need is a page header area. Okay, so now that that's saved, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exit to the dashboard. I'm going to go back to the home page and I'm going to click on my cakes to start building out the cakes. Okay, so we're going to click on edit page. All right, I'm going to select the Elementor full width and update. Okay, we view the page. Okay, so notice the title is gone and we now have a full width. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the page now. Oops, I'm sorry. Edit with Elementor, that's what I meant. Could have done that from the front end. All right, here we are. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my page header. So I'm gonna click on this, my templates, there's a page header, insert, yes, time saved, okay? We're gonna change this text, I'm literally type it right here into cakes. And now I can go ahead and add my container structure and click on the elements icon here and drag in a two column intersection to prepare me to start building out this, okay? All right. So the best way to build out that, that menu section, like you saw there, is to add an element called the image box. So if you go to Elementor items and you start typing an image, you will notice this image box. So we're gonna drag this image box in here. Okay, so here's our image box. And what we're going to do is we're going to start editing this. So in this case, these are for the blueberry pancakes. Seems like every single one of these is blueberry pancakes, which is fine. So we're going to go ahead and select our image here. Click on this and we're looking for the blueberry pancakes. There it is. I'm going to insert. The size is a thumbnail of 150 by 150. Okay. And we're gonna change the heading to say a blueberry pancake 499. Excellent. <clears throat> As we scroll down, we're gonna look at our image positioning. We want this to be to the left. All right, that already looks really good. Then I'm going to bring this a little closer. So by going to Style, Content, Spacing, and if you start dragging it, uh, two, so two is enough. Great, we've already created our menu. Okay, right. so now we just need to create a few more in anticipation for creating any other pancakes that are on the menu, All right? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to right click on this item here. Okay, and we're going to duplicate. And we'll do it one more time, duplicate. 
and then one more time duplicate and then I'm just gonna drag one of these over and duplicate that one duplicate there we go All right and now our menu is created and what I like to do is I like to just create a little bit of space around the column so I'm gonna click on the column section here go to advanced on the margins we're going to do 20 pixels around and then on the second column click this one advanced 20 pixels around okay and now that we have our pancakes page complete i'm going to click on update and now this is ready now this is, if you notice, this is some, this is a kind of a menu, right? This is a really cool menu section area. So to save us some time on creating the coffee and the muffins page, I'm going to go ahead and save this section as a template. And we're going to call this, we're going to call this cakes. Uh, actually, let's call this uh, food menu, food menu section see as you start saving these then you can quickly build out the other pages fairly quickly oh, I say quickly too many times all right close this excellent so now we're going to go ahead and view the page and our cakes page is complete so next we need to build out our coffee page now let's look at how quick quickly this is now going to run now that we've built out the first few pages. So we're gonna to go, to, go to coffee, okay. Click on edit page, go to your page attributes and make sure this is the Elementor full width template, update, edit with Elementor, okay. Click on the template icon, select my templates. We're going to insert the page header, say yes. Okay, we're going to change the text to say coffee. We're going to click on the template icon again, insert the food menu. Food menu is now inserted, and then we're going to go ahead and change each one of these. So we're going to click on this, change our image to coffee. Okay, let's go to our source site and see what they said on their coffee section. Coconut coffee. Okay, fine. I'm going to grab that. Click edit. Whoops, looks like I dragged it out. Let's drag it back in. Click edit. Coconut coffee. Okay. And then we're going to move to the uh, next one here. And what I'm going to do, save me some time. I'm going to delete these and replicate this one by right clicking, duplicate, right click on the icon there, and duplicate. All right, and then I'm going to go to this one here. We're going to delete these. And then replicate again. Replicate, same as duplicate. Duplicate. Now, I know they all say coconut coffee, but you kind of get the idea. <clears throat> you can change the, the titles. But now that we're done, update. And our coffee page is now complete. Okay. We're going to do the same thing with muffins. All right. So I'm going to go to the back to the view the page we're going to click on muffins and edit page page attributes select element or full width update edit with elementor we're going to click on the templates icon select my templates i want the page header Inserts, yes. Change this to muffins. 
click on the template icon again, select the food menu. Excellent. And then we're going to change one of these. And let's see what we have here for muffins on our source site. Oh, we have this cute little muffin here. Okay. So we're going to change this to this muffin. Insert. And I believe it is a blueberry muffin. And now I'm going to delete the rest of these. So delete, delete, and then we will duplicate. And then delete the other side. And then duplicate again, drag this over. And then you can change your images to the to muffins and have different menu items. But the muffins page is created. We're going to click update. And now we have completed our muffins page. So if we exit out of this, view the page, we now have our muffins. Okay. So the final page that we need to create is the contact us page. So if we click on this here, We've got a contact us form. I want to show you how we build this form. And <clears throat> we, on ours, have nothing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep the page. So let's go ahead and prep the page. I'm going to click on edit page. Select the elemental full width option under page attributes. Update. Okay. And then instead of going back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our Ninja Forms. Now remember in the beginning, we installed Ninja Forms, a free version of Ninja Forms to help us with our Forms plugin. So now we get to be able to use this form to uh, this uh, plugin to create a form for our page. So I'm going to go to Ninja Forms. I'm going to click on the dashboard to see if we have anything here. Uh, da, da, da. Please send me a kiss. Da, da, da. We're going to say not now. Okay, so there is already a contact me form created here. All right, so I'm going to look at this contact me form. And it's got name, email and message. So Ninja Forms does come with a form sometimes pre created. But I want to show you the process of creating a form with Ninja Forms because I think that's actually a really cool uh, thing to learn. So I'm going to leave this page to come here. And I'm gonna click on add new. And when you click on add new, you're going to see there's some pre-created forms. This is what I like about Ninja Forms. You don't have to start from scratch. So to save us some time, we're just literally going to click on the contact us form here. Okay. It says contact me, which is fine. All right. And we have name, email, message. So when we go here, we've got name, email, phone number, and what would you like with these placeholders in, in, inside. So we're going to make those same changes here. So I'm going to go here to the contact form, and I'm going to start adding things. So the first thing that I want to do, we've got name, email, we need to add a phone number. So let's click on the plus sign down here in the bottom corner. We're going to select the phone form field. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drag that in here. I want it directly under the email. So this is drag and drop, similar to Elementor. Okay, and then we're going to start configuring each section. Okay, so here's our, when we click on the, um, on the settings, on the gear here, we're going to look at, get some options. So we have the name, it's a required field. Okay, I'm going to click on display. And under placeholder, we're going to type in enter your name. Okay, that's what we want in there. Click on, so we're done with that one. Click done. Then we'll go to the next one. Email, display, placeholder, enter your email. Done. 
and then the phone number. I like to make phone numbers required. It just tells me that the person is serious. Enter your phone number. Done. And then message. Okay. I'm going to change this label to how can we help? It has a little bit more marketing value to it. How can we help? Question mark. Play. We're going to change this placeholder to how can we help? Question mark. Done. Okay. So now our form is looking pretty good. We're going to leave the submit button there exactly where it is. All right. And the next thing we're going to do is I, so whenever you're working with a new plugin, the best thing to do is just follow the plugins tabs. Sometimes it's left to right and sometimes it's top to bottom. We're just going to go left to right. So we just finished form fields, right? So when we went into the each form field, we look at every option that is available, you open it up and you make your changes as you see fit. So now that we've done that, we're going to move to the next section emails and actions. And here there are four actions already available. You can store the submission great so that you can see it in the back end. email confirmation, this is already set email notification is set and success message, and you can go through each one of these here just to make sure click on the advanced and you can see all the different things that that go, that happen under the advanced so right now let's click on save all or save none we, we do want it to be save all so save all our submissions for us and and then if there's any uh, fields that you don't want you can actually add those fields here okay very very cool feature from ninja forms okay if we look at the email confirmation so click on the gear so we got email information to, okay, to the email field, reply to, I can add my email in here if I want to. Okay, submission confirmation, and all fields, uh, and then all the fields that they submit. Of course, in the reply to, you want the reply to to be replied to the person sending the, sending the email, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and leave that alone. I'm just going through this. Email notification. So the email notification is your notification, meaning when somebody fills this out, you will get an email. When you receive the email, you can see it's set to send to set send to the system admin. If you're not the system admin, you will put your own email in here. And the reply to field is the email that the that the user is sending it from. And you've got uh, the email message and the field names and everything that needs to go in there. Okay. Click done. And last but not least is a success message. What do you want the form to say? once the person has submitted the form. And here it says that form submitted successfully, confirmation email was sent. So now that's done, okay? So we've just finished going through email actions and we made sure that everything there is what we wanted. Then I also go to the advanced option, okay? Under the advanced option for Ninja Forms, you will see that there's a display settings and there are restrict restrictions. If you click on display settings, this is where you can change the form title. So let's say right now it says contact me, but let's say I wanted to say something more descriptive like contact cakes, cakes, coffee, and muffins. Okay. Say I wanted to say that. Okay. What if I don't want it to display the form title? I, I, I do. So this is fine. Uh, clear successfully completed form that is already on high successfully com completed form that is already on yes you do want it to hide the form it kind of lets the person know that they've already submitted the form and then under the advanced you also have additional options so where do you want the labels for the form above the elements below the elements right of elements I want it to be hidden so I'm gonna click on hidden I don't want it to, to show kind of if you look here the form fills do not show Okay, so I want it to be hidden. And then everything else I'm going to leave as is, I'm going to select done. Okay, now if we go to restrictions, okay, here's where you can provide all kinds of restrictions. Do you want logged in users to be able to view the form or not? Do you want to create uh, how many submissions can be done? In this particular case, we don't really want any extra restrictions. So we're fine with that. And now that we're done building out our form, okay, all we need to do now is publish. Okay. So now the form is published. And a lot of times when I publish a form, I just like to kind of go through, make sure all my settings are still in place like I like I set them. Okay, make sure that everything is uh, exactly how I did it. Okay, good. And so now 
that we've published it, I can close out of this builder for the form and you can see our little form here. And then here is a short code. So I'm going to grab this short code. Okay. I'm going to go back to our website. I'm going to click on contact us and I'm going to click on edit with Elementor to edit this page. Okay. Whoops. Edit with Elementor. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Edit page. And now edit with Elementor. All right. So in here, now we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to click on the templates icon, click on my templates. I'm going to select the page header, insert that. I'll change the text to say contact, to make contact us. Okay. And then this time I'm just going to add one section area like that. And then in here, we're going to add our form. Okay. So I'm going to go to our elements and we can do this by short code. So if I start typing in short code, you can see that right there. I'm going to go ahead and slide this in here like this. And then you paste in your short code in the short code field here that we copied. Okay. Click on apply. All right. And then update. And then we can go ahead and view the page. All right. And you can see now that our form is in place. Very similar to this one. Okay. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, this one seems to be nicely centered. And this one seems to be very wide. Okay. So I'm going to show you how we fix that. So click on edit with Elementor. I'm going to come here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this section. Okay. And I'm going to go to my layout where it says boxed. And I'm going to use this here. And I think a good 650 will do it. All right. So let's make that 650. And now this looks way more presentable. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and now update this. And our page is now completed. Okay, let's preview that page is now completed. All right. And then uh, let's see here now that we've done this. I'm going to click on view the page. And here it is. Okay. Now there is one thing that I do want to point out. So if you notice here, um, and this looks beautiful, this looks fine with the labels and everything like that. If you look at the source site though, we don't have those labels. So why, what happened? Um, I don't know what the issue is with, nin with Ninja Forms in this case, but I do notice that for some reason, uh, some of the changes in the actual plugin itself don't get reflected when they're pulled into Elementor. So, but this is really an easy fix and I'm going to show you a very cool way to fix that. It will require a little bit of coding, but not necessarily any, it wouldn't be crazy. I mean, you'll know how to be able to do this and this could help you in other projects as well. Cause sometimes, uh, even with the best laid plans, the plugins don't necessarily work exactly the way you want them to work, which is, which is not a big problem as long as you know how to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click anywhere on the page. I'm going to select inspect to be able to open up my developer tool. I'm going to select the actual item here. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the name of this. So if I click on this here, okay, it tells me, wow, the name is NF form content label. I'm going to copy this. Okay. I'm going to copy this entire block. Okay, by pressing Command C on my Mac or Control C for using a PC. And then I'm going to close this out. 
Then I'm gonna go to my customizer and we're going to use the default WordPress additional CSS section here. We're gonna use some CSS to hide that. I'm gonna click on additional CSS and I'm going to paste that entire block. Okay, just like that. So everything contained within these brackets is gonna give an instruction to whatever the selector is. And the selector we copied is this form content. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of this. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to give it a command called display none. When, I, when you say display none, it will hide whatever selector that you're using. And you can see that it did it instantaneously. I'm gonna click on publish and our problem is solved. So with a little bit of coding knowledge, you can actually solve a lot of problems with your plugins if they're not cooperating with you. And now we have an exact identical page to the source site that we were going from, okay? And that now concludes the build out of a full website from scratch. We didn't use a template or a theme. We literally built this uh, from scratch uh, and we've created a very, very nice cakes, muffins and coffee layout for, you can use this for a bakery, you can use this for a nice little restaurant. Um, and you now have a full functioning website built with free tools, not one single paid tool and with only one coding problem solver. So that's pretty good. And this will make a great website for any, uh, any bakery or restaurant that wants to use it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you really like the tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and also remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when we create more videos like this. Also, if you'd like to see other videos or you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below. I will look at those comments and I will answer to the best of my ability. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much and please remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell. My name is Clifton and I will see you in the next video.